Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to do a comparison of the two top tablets that are available today. I've got the new iPad here on my left, otherwise known as the iPad 3, and I've got the Asus ePad Transformer Prime on the right. We're going to compare them and see which one's better for you right now. What we have here are arguably the two best 10-inch tablets that you can buy right now. On the left we have the Asus ePad Transformer Prime running Android OS 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich and on the right we have the new iPad or third generation iPad or iPad 3 whatever you want to call it with the new Retina display is higher resolution than any other tablet on the block. But first off I'm going to say this is not an iOS versus Android Smackdown. I know some of you really like one platform versus another and I'm not here to change your mind about that because they both certainly have their merits. But for those of you who are open to either, well this is for you. That said, I will discuss some basic platform differences because that should be a part of your buying decision, what it is in terms of software, ease of use, that kind of thing that you want to get out of your tablet. Now, the iPad is certainly, gosh darn, really easy to use. It's just like using an iPhone. You've got this basic grid right here of application icons. You install stuff using iTunes. You can either use your computer to do that or you can use the application that's built into the tablet to download apps, music, videos, all that kind of thing. And with Android, you're going to do everything over the air. There are third-party syncing solutions if you want to sync with your computer, but really it's designed to sync all your PIM apps, say with Gmail or Exchange, that kind of thing, and you're going to download your apps using the tablet, using what's now called Google Play Market, for, formerly the Android Market, to get your stuff. When it comes to Android, if you want to see your grid of icons, you tap right here. Sorry for those of you who are already experts and know all this stuff, but again, this is for you folks who are really kind of new to tablets. So you have pretty much the same experience right here. And on both of these, you can tap and hold if you want to delete an application that's pre-installed. You don't have to go through fiddling through settings or anything like that. It's pretty straightforward and easy. And while iOS depends on the single hardware button there that you can see on the far right to bring you back to the home screen from whatever you're doing, Google's more multitasking oriented with Android. You can see we have got a home button that takes us back home. I can tap here and this shows me all the applications I have running and I can tap on them to switch back and forth. That brings me back. And then we've got a back button for those times you just want to step through one step at a time whatever you're doing, be it web browsing or any, anything like that. So a little bit more computery, a little bit more multitasking oriented even though the iPad, of course, can multitask, things can run in the background, but you're pretty much using that home button to swap back and forth between things with no little task thing. Another aspect is right here, the difference in the desktops we're looking at. You can see I've got this really cool Mass Effect 3 live desktop or live wallpaper, as they call it, which has animations. You can have static ones if you want as well. You do have a desktop, much like a computer here, and you can put widgets and stuff like that on it. So you can have stock widgets, battery management widgets, weather widgets, all that kind of stuff. I've got weather and email notifications here. And you can put shortcuts to your favorite apps right here. You can put icons right on your desktop. So again, more multitasking, more computer-like kind of experience versus the iPad. So hopefully that will help you guys decide who really are kind of new to both and, and are open-minded with both about what it is you want. Now if you want something that's just straight, real turnkey, easy to use, it is hard to beat the iPad. Like I said, you just install apps using iTunes either over the air or on your computer and you really can't go screw things up too much, can you? You're just looking at a grid of icons right there. You tap on something, you run your application. That's about all there is to it. Also with Android, there are third-party launchers. For those of you who don't really like the look of this desktop, there are other launchers that can change the effect further. With the iPad, what you're looking at right now is what you get. Unless you get into jailbreaking, uh, you're just always going to have that particular interface. Now in terms of hardware, you can see right now that there's a definite difference in the aspect ratio. The iPad is 4 by 3 aspect ratio, a little bit more square. And this guy has widescreen aspect ratio. Again, somewhat a matter of personal preference. I find if I'm doing something like ebook reading, I like the 4x3 aspect ratio of the iPad better. If I'm watching movies and I don't want to see black bars, Transformer Prime and Android tablets in general running at that 1280 by 800 resolution are a really good choice. Of course, the new iPad has that retina display and things aren't going to look like really teeny tiny like when you go to a higher resolution monitor on your computer. They're the same size as they were with the older versions of the iPad, but everything is just sharper because the pixel density is four times higher. And indeed, you can see, looking at right now at these at a normal distance, you actually can't really see the difference in pixel densities. But when you get very close, especially if you're looking at fonts that have diagonal descenders, say like the character Y or X, you can see little jaggies on the text on the Transformer Prime, which you won't see with the new iPad. Now, 
are you going to really get that close and stare at your text that close? That's another instance. But it can improve readability. You can read with a smaller point size when you have a higher resolution display. To combat the iPad, ASUS is going to have the Transformer Infinity 700, which is a 1080p tablet, 1920 by 1080 pixels. So you're talking pretty much in the same ballpark as the iPad. It's still a little bit lower, but once you're getting that high, most of us mere mortals really can't see the difference between 1920 by 1080 and 2048 by 15. 36. So how about photo quality? That's an important potential differentiator between these two displays. So you can see we've got them both set on maximum brightness. We did not turn super IPS plus mode on on Transformer Prime, which is wildly, wildly bright because that would overexpose too much on our video camera. So this is the highest it goes on regular brightness setting, shall we say, and the iPad is also at the maximum. And they both look quite good, honestly. Try to get more of the pictures in the frame again. See, notice the difference in the aspect ratio affects it. And one last image for comparison. Again, both very striking and beautiful looking, but a little bit more color saturation, certainly on the iPad. Now that we've established that the Retina display indeed is better, even though the Prime has a really nice display, and if you look at it in person, you're going to be pretty wowed by it. How about the rest of the physical aspect? They're about the same size. Obviously, this guy is longer because of the longer aspect ratio, but if we put them on top of each other, you can see footprint-wise or length-wise, we're talking a little bit that way different, but in terms of height, about the same. And they're both quite thin. Now, the new iPad actually got a little bit thicker than the old iPad. Apple had been setting the standard for making super skinny things, so the Prime is actually a little bit thinner and a little bit lighter. It's about one and a third pounds, whereas the iPad is one point four four pounds or so, depending on whether you get your Wi-Fi only or 3G model. And honestly, you're not going to feel too much of a difference between those in terms of weight. I do notice a difference in thickness. Honestly, I believe that tablets can get too thin, and the Prime and the iPad 2 were a little too skinny to hold on to easily, so I'll take a little bit of thickness and rounding. But that's up to you. Some people really like those super skinny tablets. Now we talk about materials and build quality. Obviously, they both have metal backs here. ASUS has this really neat swirl finish, and the iPad has a typical kind of muted brushed aluminum look. Both of them are nice looking, both of them are fairly durable for tablets. And the Transformer Prime is available in a champagne tone, or this that they call amethyst. And the iPad just has that silver back, but you can get the front face in either black or white. So both good build quality, well put together, high quality stuff. Now, functionally speaking, you might say that neither one of these has a GPS. Apple does not claim that the Wi-Fi iPad has a GPS. Indeed, it will use Wi-Fi triangulation, and you can get your location and using Google Maps and stuff like that just fine, as long as you are connected to Wi-Fi. Transformer Prime, you've probably heard the brouhaha. First, they had GPS listed in the specs. It does actually have a dedicated GPS chip, but this metal back interferes with GPS reception, so mostly you're really getting by on Wi-Fi triangulation as well. With the iPad, if you go with the 4G LTE version, you do get the GPS functionality. Now, another important difference is the iPad is not about having lots of ports. This is where Android tablets, again, are a lot more like computers, where folks look for the ones that have the USB ports, the HDMI ports, all that kind of thing. Most of them do have that. The iPad has just the 30-pin dock connector standard that they've been using on iPhones, iPods, touches, and all that kind of thing for a long time, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now, the Prime is one of those super connectivity monsters. You have micro HDMI port. Now, you can add HDMI to the iPad by buying an adapter that Apple sells for about 29 bucks or so. But this also has a micro SD card slot. Now, that makes it a lot easier to get stuff on and off. You don't have to use iTunes or you can you know, use Box.net and services like that, too, with the iPad to try to get stuff on and off. But really, pretty much anything you want to throw on a card that you think you have an application to open on an Android tablet, you can. So you've got that SD card, you can just copy movies on there, no syncing required, no none of that kind of stuff. It makes life a little bit easier. And we have a little extra special sauce that the Transformer Prime has. It has a 30-pin kind of dock connector at the bottom too, a different one than Apple uses, but using that you can actually get USB hosts going. That means you can use USB peripherals like hard drives, flash drives, game controllers, really fun for gaming when you can use a hardware game controller instead of the touch screen for some of the nice 3D games that are available. And you have two ways of doing that. The first one is this little adapter right here. ASUS makes it, you can see, the plastic cover there. This plugs in the bottom port and it gives you a full USB port right here. So if you don't need the keyboard dock that costs 150 bucks just to get that USB port, you don't have to. These sell for 15 bucks. They're a little hard to find. They sell pretty quickly, but 
there you have it. And the even bigger special sauce, this is where the people who love their primes and love Android say, hey, can your iPad do this? Here's the keyboard dock. Beautiful piece of hardware also clad in metal. And you just snap your prime in there and then you've got a basic mini notebook. So this kind of changes the game totally, right? You've got this keyboard here, smallish, we're talking, you know, 10.1 inch size netbook kind of keyboard, but still usable. You've got a trackpad over here, functions as a stand, and it's got a battery built in that extends battery life about an additional four hours. Makes it more durable when you carry it. Really nice looking, beautiful package. And on the dock base, you've got a USB port right here and a full-size SD card slot as well. So once again, we're moving into computer replacement territory here. And both of these, of course, you can buy a, an external keyboard case for iPads, so it's not like you can't use a, a keyboard at all, and you can use Bluetooth keyboards. Android has a little bit wider support for a variety of Bluetooth input peripherals. So, for example, again, when it comes to something like gaming, here's this... GameStop wireless controller uses Bluetooth. You can use this to play games too if you don't want to use the USB approach. Pretty cool. This unfortunately does not work with the iPad. There is no profile for that in Bluetooth on the iPad to do that. So the transformer claims back a little bit of territory there even if it doesn't have a retina display. In terms of performance it's difficult to do cross-platform benchmarking because usually obviously you can't run the same apps on both to test. However there are some standards like Geekbench and whatever Apple tells you in terms of marketing, we'll take it for a grain of salt. The iPad 3 is not four times faster than every other tablet, but it has a quad-core GPU and a dual-core 1 gigahertz CPU. The CPU portion is the same as on the iPad 2, but they upped from two to four cores for graphics. It actually does do better on the cross-platform OpenGL benchmark test. In terms of trying to measure CPU speeds uh, on SunSpider JavaScript tests, they both do similarly. Actually, the Transformer Prime is a hair faster, but not enough to speak of. And on Geekbench, it has the faster CPU. It has a quad-core CPU running at 1.2 to 1.4 gigahertz, so there's an obvious advantage there. Now, the next question is how many applications really need four cores? Well, not so much right now, but if you're looking at future-proofing, that's something to keep in mind. Well, we'll bet probably that the next iPad, whatever Apple decides to call it, will probably have a quad-core CPU as well. By the way, NVIDIA says that their GPU, the GeForce GPU that's used in the Tegra 3 in this, is 12-core. But nonetheless, Apple's 4-core does get better performance on OpenGL Bench. When it comes to playing games, we played Shadowgun on both of these. The performance is equal. You can get Retina optimized iPad games now and you can get Tegra 3 optimized games to make full use of the power that's inside both these devices but the gaming experience is pretty much identical. The only thing that really sets some Android tablet support that had USB or if you want to use again this Bluetooth game controller is the ability to use a hardware game controller which is kind of pleasant. How about cameras? Both of these guys have front and rear cameras and Apple really stepped up their game with the new iPad. The front video chat camera is still a VGA. It's not so great, but it gets the job done. Transformer Prime has a somewhat better front video chat camera, to be honest. Uh, it depends if you use that feature as to how much you care about it. When we're talking about the rear cameras, the Transformer Prime has an 8 megapixel camera. And again, not everybody wants to hold up a big old tablet to take videos and photos, but it takes very nice photos, certainly for a tablet. The iPad 3 has a 5 megapixel camera, but you know Apple, they just do some brilliant things with cameras. So for 5 megapixels, it takes some really stunning photos. And check out our video review. We use the picture at a larger file size. You can do that without looking as grainy, but still, you know, I would say either way, you're doing pretty well. Certainly among tablets, these two guys take really nice photos. When it comes to battery life, again, you're looking at the best of the best here. Both of these guys have about longest running batteries you get in a 10-inch tablet right now. The iPad 3 depends on what you're doing, of course, if you're watching videos versus just surfing the web and how demanding it is if you've got the LTE version and whether you have LTE turned on, because that can be quite a power consumer. But Overall, about eight hours of battery life on the iPad, and likewise, the same is true for the Asus. Despite the fact that it has quad cores, it's actually four plus one cores, because it has a companion low power core that 
handles low, low uh, requirement tasks and saves a lot of battery power. It's really good. And if you combine it with this keyboard dock, since it has an additional battery in there, you can go up to, say, 12 hours. And speaking of 4G LTE, that's a real important option for some of you. I know that the, the 4G LTE version of the new iPad is selling quite well, about 50-50 right now with the Wi-Fi version. And if you want to have fast data with your Transformer Prime, well, you're not going to do it with any kind of built-in wireless radio. The Transformer Prime is only available with Wi-Fi. Now, if you have a smartphone with a mobile hotspot feature, you can use that on the road to give it access, um, tethering plans, that kind of stuff. But you're not going to get it built in the way you do with the iPad. Now, for those of you who hate the thought of paying an additional monthly charge for data, and you're just going to get the Wi-Fi iPad anyway, then it's a wash. In terms of experiential speed, they both feel very snappy. You know, iPads are always fast. You go back here, you go here, no problem. zippity do that. This guy is also very fast. We have a lot of applications running in the background right now. So Apple always does a good job of waiting user input first. What that means is the OS will basically put everything else on hold if it has to to react to your input, which makes it feel very snappy and fast. That's something that Android doesn't do yet at this point, but nonetheless, they're both very fast, very snappy guys. In terms of application selection, well, you can see I've got plenty of stuff installed right here already. And all of your, your important things are, are available on both platforms. If you want Netflix, if you want the Weather Channel, if you need MS Office Suites, you have several choices for both of these. Uh, when it comes to high quality 3D games, the iPad leads. There's a wider selection. Android is starting to catch up. It took about a year, but NVIDIA is particularly working on the Tegra Zone selection of games. But we're talking 20 games or less right now in the Tegra Zone. Now, now they're not the only ones. Gameloft makes games. So you do have more choices than just Tegra Zone, but still, overwhelming large selection of games available for the new iPad. So if gaming is an important part of what you want to do with your tablet, keep that in mind. In terms of casual games, there's plenty of casual games. You, games you've got Angry Birds for both of these guys, Cut the Rope, all that kind of thing. Mostly 3D games we're talking about when it comes to selection. Now, one other thing worth mentioning, for those of you who are into gaming, there is the OnLive service. And we've also done a video review. If you want to see OnLive, we've shown you on the Transformer Prime and also the Acer Iconia Tab A200 tablet. And that's, uh, on the iPad, what that is, that's a viewer. You can watch games being played, but you can actually play games using OnLive on Android for tablets and, and also for phones, too. So that's pretty cool. So if you don't know what the OnLive service is, they basically host the games on their servers. So it's as if you've installed it yourself on your computer, or in this case, on your tablet, but you haven't. So you can do things like play Batman Arkham City using the tablet here. And one of the reasons why it works better on Android is because you really need both the keyboard, and like I said, you can get keyboards for the iPad, but you also need a game controller to play the games, and that's, that's a no-go right now for iPads. Both of these are compatible with ebook reading applications, for example, Kindle, Nook, you've got Sony Reader as well available on Android, and a third party just for non-DRM ebooks like Aldeco and Cool Reader on Android, that kind of thing. You've got some of the same available for the iPad, so both of these work out quite well if you want to read ebooks on the selection is there. But still, you know the story, there, there are more tablet optimized apps available in the iTunes application store than there are for Android. Now both of these guys do pixel doubling, say you want to use something that was designed for a phone originally, either iPhone in the case of the iPad or an Android smartphone, you can do that and they'll just pixel double and they'll stretch it to fill up the full screen if you want or you can play in a little inset window as well. So there you have it, the two top tablets right now in early 2012, the new iPad, available starting at $500 for the 16 gig Wi-Fi version, and we've got the Asus ePad Transformer Prime for 32 gigs, that's $499. There's also a 64 gig version available for $599. With the iPad Wi-Fi version, you, if you go up to $599, you're getting 32 gigs, and if you go up to $699, you're getting 64 gigs of storage. Both have IPS displays. The Transformer Prime has Gorilla Glass and Super IPS Plus for very high brightness. The iPad has, of course, that retina display, super duper high resolution, whole lots of colors on it. And if you want to get the 4G LTE version on Verizon or AT&T for the iPad, you can do that starting at 629 for the 16 gig version, and each storage increment goes up another $100. So which tablet is for you? Hopefully we've helped you decide which one has the, the stuff that you're looking for. Really, I still put the iPad out there as the 
the best entertainment, simple turnkey, ease of use entertainment. If you want to watch Netflix, again, you can do that on both of these, but you got Hulu Plus, you've got iTunes video, you've got all sorts of stuff. It's just it's a great tablet for consuming media on. And also, given the game selection, it's just great for gaming. Android still excels for content production. Again, it's really easy to get all sorts of files on there using SD cards or flash drives. You've got a variety of Office applications on there. It really feels something that's geared to be more of a computer replacement and not as much of a multimedia device, which isn't to say, again, you can watch Netflix. Sorry, there is no Hulu Plus for this particular tablet, though. And you'll find some gaps in some of the multimedia applications when it comes to things like that. And the game selection, as we noted, it's a little bit slimmer. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. This is the ASUS ePad Transformer Prime versus the new iPad. Don't forget to watch our video review of each of these products and subscribe to our YouTube channel.